Hello, my name is uh, Rich Nolan. I work at uh, Nolan Engineering in upstate New York. And today I want to talk about wall cracking, uh, what causes wall cracks, when to worry about them. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna introduce you to a product that may be helpful in solving uh, problems with cracking, stopping them from happening. Um, as part of my job, I've done literally hundreds of inspections every year for the last 15 years. A common problem is wall cracks and are they bad or not. Typically, there's about three, three kind of different cracks. You could have a horizontal crack, a vertical crack, or a diagonal crack. In most cases, a horizontal or a vertical crack in your drywall is nothing to worry about. It's due to shrinkage, temperature changes. So typically, they're not of a structural concern. However, almost always, if you have a diagonal crack, there is an underlying reason for that crack and, and it is a structural concern. It's usually due to movement of the wall and we'll talk about that today. So this is actually my house and I do have a diagonal crack in my wall. And a lot of times you'll, or most of the time, but not all the time, you'll, the diagonal crack will start at a corner of a door opening or a window opening. And as I mentioned before, a diagonal crack is indicative of some kind of a structural movement. And in fact, we'll come to find out that this uh, post in this wall or this wall has dropped uh, slightly, uh, causing the tearing in this plaster. The other frustrating thing about cracks is you may have patched them and come to find out that they, they come back and they just keep coming back. And that will happen um, if you have uh, a wall um, that's on a flexual um, member and you get snow loads or seasonal loading and moving furniture around will tend to have the wall move up and down recreating that crack. So we will show you a product that will solve that problem. So the first thing we have to do is um, figure out where this wall is in the basement. So to do that I am going to measure how far this wall is off of the exterior wall. You can use a regular measuring tape but I'm going to use this laser measurer and I'm just going to shine the laser at the, the wall, the outside wall of my house. And it told me that this wall is 13 feet. The center of this wall is 13 feet off of that, that wall. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this way too. It's about three foot three inches from this wall. So now when I go in the basement, I'm gonna be able to locate exactly where this wall is. And we took a measurement upstairs of 13 feet. So I'm gonna click on my measuring device and I'm gonna shine the dot on the outside wall and I'm gonna walk until I hit the 13 feet. I may be up a couple of inches because this foundation wall is a little bit thicker than the wall upstairs. So right about there is where I estimate I was. And the other direction was three feet, so I'm gonna go until it hits three feet, three inches, right here. Now if I look straight up, I see that it lines up with these double floor joists. And that's pretty typical. That wall was built over top of this double floor joist. So what's happening is the weight of that wall and anything that wall supports is coming down on these two floor joists. And these two floor joists span approximately 12 feet. And they're simply flexing underneath the weight of that wall. And when these floor joists flex, that wall drops, creating the tear in the drywall. If you were to patch that tear, and then you get snow on your roof or people walking around, the crack will reform because these joists are just gonna kind of flex and come back up and flex and come back up. So what we need to do is stick a post underneath these joists near the location of that crack so that flexing stops and that crack stops happening. However, you should not just stick a post directly on your concrete floor because concrete floors are only four inches at best. Code says that you need to at least have a six inch thick concrete floor or footing to put a post on. I have literally seen posts punch right through the concrete floor. So our product is a plate that I'm going to show you in a minute that we could put down on, on the floor to prevent that problem. So this is one of our other products. We call it the Insta Footing. It's a half inch thick steel plate. This one's 12 inches by 12 inches. That's good for 9,000 pounds on a concrete floor. If you don't have a concrete floor, it will also work, but it's a lower rating. Uh, we also have a 16 inch by 16 inch wide plate, still a half inch thick. That's good for 12,500 pounds on the concrete floor. The concrete has to be at least three and a half inches thick. These plates are made to connect either a four by four wood post, a four by six wood post, a six by six wood post, or a steel lolly column. 
I'm just gonna demonstrate with a section of a six by six wood post. Simply place the post down and then these angles will adjust until it hits the post. And there's screws provide, holes provided on the side of the plates to secure your post. Once you got this secured, you would just tighten down the straps and you're good to go. The plates themselves have holes at the corners that you can mount it to the concrete floor. There's uh, a place for a half inch diameter concrete expansion anchor at each corner or at the opposite corners, you could shoot down with one of those power driven nails. In this case, to support our four joists above, we're gonna use a steel lolly column. If you're using a steel lolly column, you wouldn't need these, you can discard them. The steel lolly, the base plate of the steel lolly column will get strapped down with these straps. So these plates do come with all the hardware you need. There's also a design report on our website. And just to reiterate, you should never put a post directly on a concrete floor. So usually a builder will have to install a footing, which means cutting the concrete, digging it out, installing rebar, mixing concrete, waiting for it to cure, setting a connector. But these plates spread the load at a 45 degree angle through the slab and will take the place of a footing and can be done immediately. So I have my son here helping me. We just set the post down, we centered it on the plate. You can see the bottom plate that comes with the post. I use a, comes with a lock washer so they won't come loose over time. And you simply install the strap over the bottom plate of the post. Then I'll use just a regular socket driver to snug those up. No need to overdo it, just get them snug so the post doesn't slide around. So now I've got my post mounted to my Insta footing base plate and I want to at the top of the post underneath those floor joists that we're deflecting. What I like about using a steel post over a wood post is a wood post you have to cut the length exactly. I like having the ability to adjust it. Yes, they are more money. However, it's a lot easier to adjust and get that post snugged up underneath the beam, underneath the floor joist above. Once I get this thing adjusted, cinched up, I would secure the top of the post and the bottom of the floor joist with nails and then I would secure the base plate to the floor just simply to stop it from being kicked out if someone were to run into it. Now that I've got this post installed on one of our Insta footing base plates underneath those floor joists that were deflecting, those floor joists can no longer deflect so that wall crack above will stop occurring. If I were to patch that crack now, I wouldn't expect it to come back because that wall can no longer depress those floor joists. Now these plates, like I said, are available in two different sizes, the 12 by 12 inch, the 16 by 16 inch. The size depends on the load it has to carry. You can visit our website, www.instafooting.com for more information. And these plates are not only used to stop wall cracks, but for any reason in the basement where you need to put a post, whether you're removing walls or adding beams or shoring up your existing floor system. Thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Rich Nolan from Nolan Engineering in upstate New York. If uh, you have any questions on any other wall cracking or other products, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know.